All right, so this video is a message to the folks that work over at Lumix because I think they're watching and I have an idea and I think this is gonna be pretty important. That sounded a little cocky, but basically a couple weeks ago, I went to Cinegear, had a wonderful time, and during that, I went to the Lumix booth, introduced myself, and one of the guys who worked at Lumix was like, why are you introducing yourself? I already know who you are. I've seen your videos. I saw that you made a video about this old guy right here, the AGAF100, an older Panasonic Cinema Micro Four Thirds camera and then put this here with the black magic full frame you guys get along all that to say they might be watching this video so if you guys agree with what I'm about to talk about then maybe make your own videos too I think that's what's cool about YouTube is we can just put our voice out there and sometimes the companies actually pay attention and it ends up benefiting us so Let's get into it. This video is sponsored by Motion Array. More on them when you're least expecting it. I'd actually like to start this video with a confession. So you guys are gonna be my priest for a couple seconds. I started shooting with Canon, then I switched to Lumix, then I switched to Blackmagic, then I switched to Fuji and then Sony. And now nine years later, after getting my first real camera, I'm kind of just figuring things out. And I think Lumix is too. Here's my proposal. If Lumix can make the camera that I'm about to describe in this video, then I might make the switch. I know, headlines are being made. YouTuber makes video about switching from one camera brand to another. Never been done before. <laughs> so what I'm kind of desiring is a lineup of three cameras that would fulfill three different needs and tasks, but still be able to work pretty seamlessly together. Stick with me here, but the first camera on my list is, of course, the dad cam. For me personally, I think it could be the Lumix S9. So don't, don't cancel me yet. And it's funny because I actually pre-ordered this camera as soon as it got announced before any of the stuff happened. I thought it would be a great dad cam for me. Here's why. Full frame photo video. If you've been watching any of my recent videos, I've been kind of on the hunt for the perfect life documentary camera for like high quality photos where I can shoot JPEGs that look kind of filmic or cinematic without editing. We all know the S9 has the, the new LUT feature and the Lumix Lab feature where basically I could just get Fuji film simulation style photos, but customize them even more and have them directly uploaded to my phone where I could just send them to family or friends or post on Instagram. But I also wanted this dad cam to be able to be relatively pocketable, which the S9 seems like it could be depending on the lens. And I want it to be able to shoot really nice footage of my son and my family. And, and I haven't tested the S9 yet, so I'm waiting for <laughs> mine that I paid for with my own money to come in so that I can actually test it and see if it's good for all these things. But it seems like it could be. It's got the open gate footage and I know it's got record limits and stuff like that So I'll have to test it out I really just shoot small burst footage and photos of my kid and my wife and I don't need super long takes Definitely some major bummers <laughs> with that camera like the record limitations obviously and no EVF I feel like is gonna be super annoying for me personally kind of curious just to see what the s9 feels like before I decide if I actually want to like, keep it around Okay, so that covers number one, the dad camera. What is camera number two, you might ask? That's of course, the YouTube camera. And if I'm wanting to stick within one ecosystem to just let everything be seamless together, it makes pretty obvious sense that this would be the Lumix S5 II X. With the newest firmware update, the autofocus from my tests seem to be really good. Obviously that's gonna depend on lighting situation and lens selection, but when I was using the 1.8 primes, it worked really well. And don't get me wrong, I love my FX30 and I don't even know if I'm gonna be doing <laughs> any of what I'm saying in this video. It's just kind of a, a theory experiment. But with Lumix, and the S5 2X, I would get analog limiters of audio, which I so badly miss from my GH5 days. It was so nice having actual analog limiters so things don't clip as much. <clears throat> and of course, all you Lumix folks out there get the absolute joy of open gate recording. And I feel like that's just becoming the norm now, which is really cool. A more niche thing that I think would be cool switching to Lumix possibly would be the vlog profile. I noticed from just recent footage that I gathered that compared to S-Log3 on the mirrorless camera Sony offers, Sony's colors make my skin look more red than normal. I've made like a custom power grade now, but basically I have to kind of awkwardly bend the colors to make my skin look kind of natural. Vlog for whatever reason, I feel like captures me slightly more naturally and Vlog in general looks beautiful. They're both close, like they both look really nice and with a little tweak, you can make it look fine. It's not that big of a deal, but just something I thought of. 
But there's an even more niche setting on Lumix cameras that I think would be amazing. Now, I don't know if the S9 has this. You guys will probably let me know in the comments, but I believe the S52X has something called white balance lock, where basically the camera is set to auto white balance, which I would use a lot because I do a lot of dock style filming. You basically leave the camera on auto white balance, and then as soon as you hit record, it locks where that auto white balance was. So it's not changing and fluctuating while you're recording. That would be an amazing feature for me personally, just my style of shooting. And I'd be going to pound town on a weekly basis and it would be sick. Okay, so we've covered the dad cam, the YouTube cam. What is this mysterious theoretical camera in my head as cam number three? Three is the best number, why? Because Dwayne Wade is my goat. And Dwayne Wade right at the body of Anderson Barrage. Man, he is good at basketball. Kind of like how Motion Array is good at helping you take your videos from pretty mediocre to very professional and cool. Motion Array is a one-stop shop for all things video. Pro video, baby. They got video templates that will work with any software that you choose. My software of choice is DaVinci Resolve, of course. So I can download text templates and macros and random fun things that work in DaVinci Resolve specifically so that I can customize them to my liking. But they also have motion graphics and I don't know about you but I'm not animating stuff so I can just download cool things here and make them my own in my edit. They also have stock footage like this guy playing basketball who's not Dwayne Wade but still better than me. They have music, sound effects, graphics, photos but probably my favorite part is the way they manage plugins. Motion Array has something called the plugins hub where basically you download this as its own program that you can open on your Mac or your PC. It makes things more convenient because you don't have to go to the motion Motion Array website every time you need something. So if you're like me and trying to constantly improve your videos, check out Motion Array today at the top link in the description. Now let's reveal this mysterious third camera in my brain. So my number three camera is obviously gonna be a production camera. I talked about this in my iPad travel video where I went to Cinegear, but do you guys remember the Panasonic EVA 1 camera? I was so excited about that thing. I never ended up owning it. I should make a video on it, actually, but what happened to that? What happened to that idea, that concept, where basically it's like an FX6 style competitor camera from Panasonic? Now is the perfect time for Panasonic to invest and make something like that and try to take a portion of that market. So we're gonna kind of go into everything I would want from this camera so obviously we want open gate full frame sensor and I'm hoping that we could get a max resolution and frame rate of 6k 60 frames per second no crop it's probably a big ask but I think it would be super sick and it would compete with the Canon C400 which would be awesome and I'm also hoping I can get 4k DCI at 120 frames per second full frame no crop and of course the obvious one is the modern phase detect autofocus that they've been working on in the s52x and now the s9 but it'd be cool to also have their incredible ibis which is insane in the gh7 but that is a smaller sensor so like s52x style ibis in this production camera would be rad obviously we need lumix's amazing professional audio function so like the analog limiters xlr ports two of them hopefully 32-bit float because we know it's possible in the GH7. And then I'm hoping the whole thing will come packaged in this rugged, high-quality body design. Nothing plasticky. I want it to feel like a actual professional production camera. I want to know what you guys think about the screen situation because in my mind, it'd be kind of cool if it was Ursa style where it would like fold out and be able to rotate as a flip screen so you could use it for talking heads and YouTube stuff, but also just like a big, bright monitor. I guess you could go with like a smaller, removable one like... Canon C400, FX6, but I think I would just prefer it on the body. And then if I want a second monitor, I could just add one to the top of the camera, especially built-in NDs. If you guys can do it on this old camera, you can definitely do it again. And then I think make an EVF that's optional and that you could pay extra for because some people just won't want to use it. I probably wouldn't buy it, but you can make an optional EVF. That's a way for them to make even more money. And I don't know what their deal is with Aerie, but they could potentially maybe try to put Log C in this camera as well. I personally don't really care about that very much, but that could be another way they could make money for that optional upgrade like the GH7. And I would hope to see all of this come in a nice Lumix affordable package for maybe 6,500, seven Gs or less. 
That'd be sick. So why did I start thinking about all this jargon? Well, I think it was Cinegear, but also I cam opt some music videos recently where we shot on an Alexa 35 and I forgot how incredible footage looks on a heavier camera setup. But we had it on an easy rig and like all the handheld footage with the easy rig just looked amazing. It's just a look you can't get with really tiny lightweight cameras and lenses. And it made me miss that style of footage that just has that professional edge to it. Not just from the image quality, but from like the weight of the camera itself and the size of a camera. Lumix just has such an opportunity here with all their modern technology and their insane image quality. And it seems like a smart move for them in terms of business because they could start competing with the C400, the Komodo X, the FX6, the Pixis when that comes out for $2 and I probably won't buy it, but it competed. <laughs> but I wanna know what you guys think. Would you actually buy a camera from Lumix like this? Do you have any need for it? Is it smart for them to make something like this? Am I a complete moron? Blast me below and I would love to check out what you guys think. Yeah, subscribe for <laughs> tons, of, tons of really good stuff. Text me when you get home so I know you're safe, you're loved. Drop a comment, all that stuff. Skibbity, abbity, rubbity, loobity, goobity, tibbity, boobity. See you in the next one.